<laughs> we can stop there. Yes, we can, except we can't. It's the stuff of spy movies. You're driving along and all of a sudden, all the functions of your car, your horn, your lights, maybe even your brakes or your accelerator pedal are out of your control. Your car has been hacked. Here at the Transportation Research Center in East Liberty, Ohio, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is working hard to make sure something like this never happens to you. Hacking cars is much harder than you might think, at least for now. The goal of the engineers here is to work with car makers to protect cars from this sort of intrusion. We at Consumer Reports believe this research is crucial for your safety, and that's why we're here. Frank Berkman is NHTSA's electronics team lead for the Applied Crash Avoidance Group. Frank showed us what's possible and what's not in hacking cars today. We have modern day electronics, we have interfaces possibly that somebody could come in wirelessly, that someone can come in physically, and that someone could possibly do something nefarious to the vehicle. What we're doing here is trying to understand what those possibilities are and understand if we can do things to prevent that, make them safer, or to secure those types of interfaces. For this demonstration, NHTSA wanted to show us the functions someone might be able to take over from outside the car. Right now, hijacking those functions requires having a computer plugged into the car, as well as someone with an intimate knowledge of a car's software system. The results were eye-opening. This is what can happen if you have uh, physical access to the car. I'm, my hands aren't leaving the wheel. Wow, seatbelt pretensioners going, the fans going full blast, the horns going, the windows are going up and down all at once. It's quite the haunted car. You better check your gas because what you thought you had a half tank of gas is you're actually empty. You know, we should watch your speed because uh, you know, this road's generally around 30 miles an hour, not 199. I am able to manipulate the vehicle speed on the display, but obviously it's not affecting what your true vehicle speed is. So you can feel like you're going straight, maybe getting a tug to the left. I want to correct that. So, and there's other fun we can have with you too, like applying the brakes. Which I didn't do. <laughs> it's startling if you don't know it's going to happen. Yeah. The first time you usually get it, it's kind of uh, scares the crap out of you. So will there become a time when this does become a reality, where it doesn't have to be in a laboratory setting? In the real world, is it a matter of, it's not if, it's when a car will be hacked and something will happen to it dynamically, operationally, where the driver will lose control of the car? I believe it is a matter of not if, when. Um, systems today are becoming more complex. They're becoming more electronic. There are more and more advanced safety systems which can have controllability of the steering, of the brakes, of the throttle. As we have more vehicles out there, is the potential there? Yes. However, the automakers, uh, the government, there's a lot of research going on to help harden these systems, doing our due diligence, and trying to prevent those things from happening in the future. With wireless technology evolving, there is the potential for someone to imitate a car's infotainment and communications signal with just a cell phone, allowing for an external hack. Again, remote access is not currently possible without having hardware that is hardwired into the car. But NHTSA is trying to stay a step ahead of rogue hackers who might try to make that software coding leap. We're able to call the car and we'll see the phone conversation, the phone call coming in. We see a countdown happening here for some reason. We can pull up to the van here. Okay. Can we go a little faster. I cannot because the check engine lights on, battery lights on, oil lights on, gas is floored, nothing's happening. I'm coasting down to a stop. So effectively, what I've demonstrated here is by me calling this car, the car is essentially shut off. So this car has been programmed where when it sees my number call, uh, it activates a, a certain part of the code which essentially kills the car. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to let that hang there because actually that's pretty freaky. Because I, I, thought, I thought usually that the ECU and, you know, the vehicle dynamics of the car were usually kept pretty separate, but yeah, you're, this showing, is, you're showing that this bridge is yeah. very possible. <laughs> we can stop there. Yes, we can, except we can't. <laughs> wow, the ABS is just going furious at me. So you can pump all day long, you have no authority. There we go. <laughs> at the end, you were on it, so yes. So we've seen a lot of possibilities for scary things that could happen to your car that are completely out of your control. But how realistic is this, and how realistic could it be in the future? 
Well, it's obviously possible to do these things. We've demonstrated them to you. However, the fact that we were using physical access is going to really preclude us from uh, widespread use of these. These were not done from a mobile base station that then hit a thousand cars all at once. So it's highly unlikely that this is going to affect widespread numbers of cars. So there you have it, a pretty scary situation behind the wheel, but the folks at NHTSA are working on it and conducting more research to make sure it doesn't happen in the future. And we'll be following this subject closely. For more information on this subject, check out consumerreports.org.